Hello and welcome to the Business Standards Morning Show. I'm Kanishka Gupta and let's have a look at the stories for the day. What the world needs now is people who see healthcare a little bit differently. Because seeing a healthier world isn't far in the future. We're building it now. GE, building a world that works. The government has been doggedly pursuing its flagship production-linked incentive or PLI scheme to boost manufacturing, grow exports, generate employment and cut dependence on import. The scheme covers 14 significant sectors and involves a total outlay of 3 trillion rupees and it is getting good responses too. Vendors of smartphone maker Apple such as Foxconn and Vistron have set up bases in India. But there is a hurdle and a long road ahead with a lot of competition from smaller nations like Vietnam and Malaysia. Our next report talks about this challenge. Vietnam clearly means business. After bringing home Samsung's mobile phone business from China, which translated into an investment of over $18 billion, it is now on the prowl for more major companies. A few days ago, the Southeast Asian country's Prime Minister Pham Minh Chin met Apple Inc. CEO Tim Cook at the latter's headquarters in Cupertino, California and Pham returned home smiling with a promise. Cook assured Pham that Apple would consider increasing the number of domestic suppliers from the country and involve them in the global giant's supply chain. Vietnam now accounts for over half of Samsung's global smartphone output. It is eyeing Apple now. 95% of Apple's products are still assembled in China which clocks revenues of $365 billion. But stringent COVID-19 lockdowns in the country are prompting Apple to explore other alternatives. And it sees Vietnam as one such attractive option. Last year, the Vietnamese government granted Foxconn, which is Apple's biggest contract manufacturer, a license to invest $270 million for a plant to make laptops and tablets. According to analysts, Apple produced around $1.67 billion worth of phones in 2021 in India. So, as Apple and other tech companies are looking for options outside China, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia and even Thailand are vying to step into the breach. And then there is Brazil which is also assembling the latest iPhones and will also look for more volumes from Apple. These countries are set to pose a challenge before India, which has rolled out an ambitious production-linked incentive scheme to woo foreign companies. The only major nation which can, you know, supplement or replace China as a very large uh, industrial manufacturer and electronic manufacturer is India. Uh, you see, these, these countries you are mentioning, uh, I would like to clarify, I, I don't see any great future for Brazil because of the you know, restrictive policies they have and the very high level of protection they have. They've made their industry very inefficient. But Vietnam has been a stalwart uh, uh, in uh, nation as far as electronic manufacturing is concerned. We lost out to them about 10, 11 years back when the major Samsung investment went to Vietnam. We missed out that and uh, we surely should not uh, miss out this time around when uh, Vietnam is uh, exerting to build uh, capacity and they are inviting companies with a red carpet. Uh, we must ensure that you know India's great demographic dividend and our strengths uh, are uh, leveraged and we take advantage of them. Clearly, India will have more competition. The potential of Apple's bigger shift from China, which could lead many other multinationals to follow suit, has already been given as an example 
by US government officials to highlight the economic benefits of joining the recently formed Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. They say countries that have signed up for the forum will have an advantage in getting business from US companies. India has a good head start. Unlike the other potential competing countries, the factories of the three big Taiwanese vendors of Apple Inc, Foxconn, Vistron and now Pegatron are up and running. They are targeting over 47,000 crore rupees worth of phones in FY23, a more than threefold increase over the previous year under the PLI scheme. According to CounterPoint research, India accounted for 3.1% of Apple's global manufacturing base in 2021, up from 1.3% in 2020, while that of other Southeast Asian countries put together is just touching 1%. CounterPoint expects India's share to hit 5 to 7% in 2022. While it is good news, India's plan to match up to China may face a big hurdle. Companies, whether global or Indian, that are eligible for PLI incentives are finding it challenging to build a substantial ecosystem of suppliers within the country. And without it, one cannot build economies of scale and a global hub for exports. Chinese suppliers dominate the mobile device supply chain globally for both mobile devices and laptops and tablets. They do so at the lowest cost and own the technology too. That is the case not only for Apple's contract manufacturers, but also for all Indian domestic manufacturers that are trying to leverage their PLIs to become domestic champions with an eye on exports. This means these Chinese suppliers need to set up shop in the country, bringing their technology with them. But after the India-China border clashes in 2020, India tweaked its foreign direct investment policy to effectively exclude Chinese companies from the automatic clearance route. That has made it very difficult for them to set up manufacturing units on their own or in joint ventures in India. This restriction effectively hands the advantage to countries like Vietnam, which has a larger supply chain, a huge cost advantage even factoring in PLI, and no special scrutiny on Chinese investments. The only advantage India enjoys is a well-trained workforce and engineers, an area where a small country like Vietnam is facing challenges. The option of focusing on non-Chinese suppliers or developing domestic alternatives is a suboptimal one given the dominance of Chinese players in all critical supply chains and their ability to produce components at the lowest cost. In Apple's top suppliers list of 2020, one-third come from China. And building a domestic supply base is the long-term answer, but that will take time. It is not possible to build a supply chain effectively, efficiently, and in an optimum manner without uh, the presence of uh, Chinese players. Today, we are importing parts and components from China. Uh, instead of that, if the same companies are producing in India, it will be a value add for the nation and the industry. So we should look at it uh, with an open mind. In fact, I give the example of China who build their electronic industry on two virtually enemy countries, which is Japan and uh, Taiwan. Uh, they got investments from there, they got manpower from there, they got technology from there and they built this, you know, awesome mean machine, which is their electronic hardware sector. So I think India should take a leaf out of that. In response to these constraints, the government a few months ago made some Chinese companies eligible for PLI in LED parts subject to FDI approval. Other players in the electronics PLI sectors said one solution is to permit joint ventures that are dependent on what technology and skills the Chinese bring to the table. The ball is clearly in the government's court to balance geopolitical challenges with business realities.
सब अच्छी दिख रही हैं यार कौन सी खरीदू ये तो वही बात हुई चार हजार शेयर लिस्टेड है कौन सा लू वो तो सबसे आसान है तुझे फाइव पैसा नहीं पता अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा पर है चार हजार स्टॉक्स की रिसर्च टेक्निकल टूल्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडिया डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुल बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग It is not just the PLI scheme but the upcoming auction of IPL media rights is also on a sticky wicket. After TV viewership of recently concluded IPL dropped by 30%, demands are being made to bring down the reserve price for the upcoming auction of its media rights for the next 5 year cycle. So what could be the possible reasons for the fall in IPL viewership and will it have any bearing on media rights sale? Let us find out. The 15th edition of the Indian Premier League came to a close on Sunday. Debutants Gujarat Titans were crowned the winners after they defeated Rajasthan Royals by 7 wickets. All eyes are now on the upcoming e-auction of the league's media rights, which is set to commence from June 12. It promises to be a high voltage event. Indian Cricket's governing body BCCI has set the reserve price at 32,890 crore rupees for the 2023 to 27 cycle of the IPL. This is nearly double of the 16347 crore rupees that Star India now part of the Walt Disney Company shelled out for the last 5 years for consolidated TV and digital bid. Sony Pictures Networks India held the media rights for the first 10 years for which it paid the BCCI about 8200 crore rupees. For the next 5 year cycle the rights will be sold in four buckets and interested parties have to bid separately for each. The four categories are television rights for the Indian subcontinent digital rights non exclusive digital rights for a set of 18 matches which include the season opener four playoffs and evening games of weekend double headers and rest of world at least 10 companies have reportedly picked up the bid documents by paying the bcci a non refundable fee of 29.5 lakh rupees including gst these include disney star sony z entertainment amazon apple google sky sports uk and south africa super sport Amazon's Prime Video recently began live streaming cricket matches and reportedly wants to win the IPL rights to expand its user base. However, a sharp fall in IPL's TV viewership has led some in the industry to question the base price for media rights. Sony Pictures Networks India's MD and CEO NP Singh told a financial daily earlier this month that the reserve price needs a reality check amid the decline in viewership. IPL's viewership fell by 30 to 35% in the first 4 weeks of the 2022 season. compared to last year's figures with viewership falling consistently some advertisers had reportedly asked disney star to make good their loss by offering them spots on other high impact properties maruti suzuki executive director shashank srivastava had on may 1st said that in the first 25 matches television ratings for the company's target group of males between 22 and 40 years of age dropped by around 58% He added the car maker was in discussions with Star for additional free commercial time on live matches so that the overall reach numbers and commitments that were made could be met. Experts pointed to possible reasons for the viewership fall including audience fatigue given this season was the longest ever lasting 65 days and 74 matches with two new teams. Chennai Super Kings and Mumbai Indians which are among the most consistent sides with large loyal fan bases displayed poor performance. They ended the season at the bottom of the points table. The performances of big names like RCB's Virat Kohli, CSK's MS Dhoni, and Mumbai Indians's Rohit Sharma were also lackluster. With zero super overs this season, the audience also did not get to witness the kind of nail-biting finishes they seek. I, I think the reason why the viewership has been down. I mean, I can only speculate, but certainly one. Possible reason is that with with a very dramatic reshuffle of team, uh, you know, a lot of teams have become you know unrecognizable. There are new teams, and so there's a, uh, I guess, a certain sense of some unfamiliarity over a period of time. You know, though some of the teams had started building loyalty and a strong loyal base, and I think this has kind of disturbed that a bit. The other possible reason, and again, you know, one doesn't know if this is true, but I think, given the fact that I think the evenings have tended, you know, to be. Uh, a, a a time when 
you know, one can go out now, one can socialize, one can do other things. And so therefore, I think there is this sense of getting out of prison for a lot of people. I, I think so. Therefore, to a certain extent, there is also that, that there is competition now, not so much from other sources of, you know, OTT or another television channels as much as just from life. I don't fundamentally think that the IPL as a brand or cricket as a game has lost its uh, draw. K. Madhavan, president of the Walt Disney Company India and Star India, had said Disney Star will not engage in a bidding war and pay multiple times more, even though it is looking at retaining the media rights. He told Business Standard that it will only go for bidding if it makes for a viable business. If someone offers 10 times for the property, we are not there, he said. However, cricket has proved to be a winner for streaming giant Disney+. Plus. It added nearly 8 million new subscribers worldwide in the March quarter, half of them courtesy Disney Plus Hotstar. The service now has over 50 million paid subscribers, accounting for 36.4% of the total paid subscriber base of Disney+. Plus. Now, if you look at the TV segment itself, it is facing a lot of pressure. I think uh, we've lost uh, a few million households as far as TV is concerned. We are somewhere now close to uh, 170 million TV households. Uh, uh, out of which you know close to 40 to 45 million are still FTA, which is not considered uh, to be as a as an audience or target uh, you know in terms of the IPL. So we have close to 120 million TV households uh, as we speak, uh, you know, which is there uh, you know from from an IPL uh, target perspective on the TV media. So the base price for TV is around three and a half thousand crore per year, and if you look at uh, TV IPL revenue. Uh, uh, this year, because of the increase in terms of number of teams and the number of matches by 22.3 odd percent, uh, we would have somewhat reached uh, you know that 3,000 crore mark as far as TV IPL revenue is concerned. I don't see that uh, there is a scope for a revision downward uh, for the TV rights because if you look at the TV industry, uh, you know the revenues their growth rate is there in the range of about six to seven percent. Uh, so we will breach towards a 4,500 to 5,000 crore kind of an annual run rate mark in terms of TV IPL revenue over the next five years. Now, what can only happen is that, you know, on this base price of three, three and a half thousand crores, uh, which BCCI has laid out, I don't see a massive premium. Uh, you know, the premium could be in the range of about the maximum to 25 to 30%. Uh, so whatever incremented growth that is going to come in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of eyeballs, in terms of consumption, revenue, is going to come from digital. The OTT rights uh, could go at a premium of at least 100% plus. I think on a consolidated basis, the final price could eventually settle in the range of 50 to 60,000 crores. You would imagine that when viewership is down, that should be the single variable that determines uh, uh, the price for media rights. But my sense is that actually what, what that is governed by is the fact that there isn't an opportunity like the IP. Losing IPL is like you know, really, really a, a big deal. Not getting IPL is like a really big opportunity lost. As a result of competitive pressure, I suspect that the price uh, will will hold. I mean, I think the expectations will hold, uh, might even be surpassed. This is a property people cannot afford to miss if they are serious about the Indian market. And I think, therefore, that is a different set of kind of considerations uh, that goes into determining what is a fair price for this. And viewership may not play as much of a role. If, of course, the viewership trend continues over the next two or three years, then then obviously the the uh, you know it might the pricing might take a hit. For advertisers, this is the only place where you get a, a particular audience watching you repeatedly, and therefore the ability to get your message across for sure. There isn't anything like it. In fact, with such fragmentation of media, what you have is that there are very few properties where you are assured of a certain minimum attention over a period of time. And the IPL is only is, is one of its kind. Still, does the reserve price look too high in view of the dip in viewership numbers? As analysts say, IPL is still one of a kind asset, giving advertisers sway over hundreds of millions of viewers while helping broadcasters gain additional user base. Given this, the temporary drop in viewership will not be a dampener for BCCI, which can expect the media rights to sell well above its base price. मत पूछ यार फिर से स्टॉक्स में फंस गया तो स्टॉक्स के साथ बॉन्ड्स इंश्योरेंस गोल्ड में बैलेंस कर इसमें बहुत तामचाम है तुझे फाइव पैसा नहीं पता अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा है ऑल इन वन अकाउंट डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है Investing made easy and rewarding with five paisa. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks.
Read all the related documents carefully before investing. Markets can be as unpredictable as any IPL match. The Indian rupee has depreciated nearly 4% this year as a stronger dollar coupled with relentless foreign fund outflow signaled diluted demand for emerging market currencies. While the overall impact of a weaker rupee is negative on the equity market, some sectors stand on benefit from this freefall. Our report tells more about this. The Reserve Bank of India's rate hike in May, in order to be in line with the global market sentiment, has pushed the domestic currency to record low levels. The rupee has skidded over 2% against the US dollar in May, in its worst monthly decline in 2022. By comparison, the S&P BSC Sensex and the NSC Nifty 50 have tanked over 3% each during the period. Weak economic data, rising interest rates, soaring inflation, and exit of foreign investors are some of the key triggers behind the rupee's meltdown. That is because a depreciating rupee does not bode well for foreign investors as returns reduce from Indian investments, prompting their departure. According to data provided by Jeffries, foreign portfolio investors have sucked nearly $5 billion out of Indian equities in May so far. Moreover, a falling rupee expands the deficit maths of an import-oriented economy like India. As our economy is heavily dependent on crude oil imports, a weaker rupee as well as higher crude oil prices weighs on the current account deficit. It also presents the risk of imported inflation. Remember, a heavier import bill along with a weaker rupee widened India's deficit to $20.7 billion in April from $18.5 billion in March. According to a report by S&P Global Market Intelligence, India's oil import bill hit a record high in April as it surpassed 4.8 million barrels a day. Against this backdrop, analysts believe that import-dependent companies will bear the brunt of a sliding rupee, especially when the input costs are on the rise. On the country as a whole, uh, clearly our trade deficit is primarily owing to our import bill and which comprises largely of import of crude oil. Uh, and when pricing over there kind of goes up and with the depreciating uh, rupee, uh, so the cost gets transferred, uh, you know, to the clients, uh, sorry, to the economy in general. And uh, a function of that is to see the inflationary trend rising. And that's why we've seen the kind of increase in inflation of late, right? Um, and so to companies which have, uh, you know, which basically import, largely import dependent for creating the final product, are companies which are going to be significantly impacted. So for a company which kind of, you know, imports material to then create a finished good to be exported, there obviously there'll be a neutralizing impact, right? Because obviously the import cost would have increased. Uh, and, uh, you know, so and the while, while there's an appreciation on the uh, export side of it, it kind of gets neutralized because of the higher import cost. And not to forget the inflationary trend in general for all input costs. According to a report by ICRA, the Indian rupee could trade in the range of 75 to 79 per dollar in the first half of FY23. A rise in the current account deficit, along with monetary policy tightening, dollar strength and risk aversion towards emerging markets is expected to impart a depreciating bias to the Indian rupee. However, large forex reserves, narrowing inflation differentials and the likely stemming of FII debt outflows would prevent a further depreciation. That said, a weaker rupee offers a silver lining for the export-oriented sectors. Analysts believe that IT, pharma, textiles and specialty chemicals could gain a competitive edge amid a sharp decline in the rupee. Far are going to benefit the IT sector, the pharma sector, the textiles and the specialty chemicals. It all depends on the global demand pickup that could happen. The rising input costs uh, would probably have a neutralizing these gains but not for the IT service sector or a labor intensive textile sector, but the rest of the export oriented uh, sectors, which would also have an import uh, intensity uh, very high. For them, this could be an impact on the rising input cost. Uh, on, the, on the weaker side of the sectors, which could be seen on the rupee depreciating is the automobile, capital goods, petroleum, power and telecom sector, which would not gain anything on this. They will have to bear the brunt on the weaker side of the rupee. 
Overall, with rising interest rates and weak global macros, there's little room for optimism for the domestic currency. On Tuesday, markets will track GDP data for the March quarter of 2022. Globally, Eurozone CPI data and the UK's consumer credit data will also be on investors' radar. शेयर्स में ट्रेडिंग तुम्हें फाइव पैसा नहीं पता ओए अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा पर मिलते हैं रिसर्च टूल्स पोर्टफोलियो एनालिटिक्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडियाज भी डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल द रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग Global indices soared yesterday as pandemic curbs eased by China apparently weighed heavy on multiple headwinds, including the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. Now, these two countries also supplied one third of wheat, which the world consumed. And when the supply came to a halt, the world turned towards India, which promised to fill the void. But soon, domestic compulsions forced it to backtrack. Our next report explains why India slammed a break on wheat export. India is the world's second largest producer of wheat, but most of it was being consumed by the country itself, leaving little room for export. And whatever little we exported, it mostly went into neighboring countries, like 55% of our wheat went to Bangladesh. But over the years, our wheat export has been on the rise. In FY22, India exported a record 7.85 million tons of wheat. It was a 270% jump from 2.1 million tons the previous year. And this year, when Russia invaded Ukraine, India found itself in a spotlight. Scores of countries which used to purchase wheat from the two countries looked towards New Delhi to fill the void. During the second week of April, Prime Minister Narendra Modi told US President Joe Biden that India was ready to supply its food stock to the world if the World Trade Organization allowed it. Orders for wheat stocks started pouring in from foreign shores. Farmers were happy and so was the government. Egypt which typically gets 80% of its wheat from Russia and Ukraine, approved imports from India in mid-April. On May 4, Food Secretary Sudhanshu Pandey said the centre was not moving to curb wheat exports as India had sufficient stocks. But the Food Secretary said that due to an increase in market prices and higher demand by the private players, both for domestic as well as export purposes, the centre's wheat procurement would be lower this year. He added that a large quantity of wheat was being bought by traders at a higher rate than the minimum support price, which was good for the farmers. Around the same time, addressing the Indian diaspora in Germany, PM Modi said Indian farmers were coming forward to feed the world when big nations were worried about food security. Just two days before announcing the ban, the government said it would send trade delegations to nine countries including Indonesia, Thailand and Turkey for exploring possibilities of boosting wheat exports from India. But on May 13, the Indian government pulled a surprise and shocked many. It ordered a ban on export of wheat with immediate effect. Just before the ban, the government had plans to export a record 10 million tons of wheat this year. According to the government, the main reason for the ban was to manage the overall food security of the country and to support the needs of the neighboring and other vulnerable countries. It comes against the backdrop of the hottest March in 122 years, which stunned the grain, leading to a considerable drop in yield. The yield this year may barely cross the 100 million tons mark, down from the government's initial estimate of a record 111 million ton harvest. Meanwhile, the stock in the granaries of the Food Corporation of India is also low, and if the government extends its free grain program, the FCA stocks may dwindle further. Currently, it has 30 million tons in storage, and combined with this year's purchase of about 19.5 million tons, it is just enough to meet the government target of free grain plan. So, exporting about 10 million tons from this year's yield would not have been a good idea given the increase in domestic market consumption. But critics say that the move has hit the farmers who were about to harvest a good windfall after several years. I'm backed by the nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.
Experts believe that subsiding the public at the cost of farmers was not a good idea. And it is even against the spirit of farm laws that the government had introduced only to withdraw them just before assembly elections. That's all for today. We will be back with more news and analysis on our next episode. Stay tuned and thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.